truly terrible. It's filmed in front of a live studio audience. Hey, what's up, sluts? This is Taylor. And I uh, thought I'd make one of these for you because it's been a week, and I, I do these every week now. If you haven't caught on, go back in my uploads and look. They will, in fact, be one week apart, and uh, I'm doing my best to keep it regular, uh, like a like a fiber-filled diet, as regular as possible, which I need to up because I've been severely lacking, and I'm falling into that lifestyle where every shit is a dire emergency, and it's getting into the car for a three-minute drive is, is rolling the dice at this point. It's just, it's not good. Um, I had Subway for the past two days. How much of a lazy fuck am I? Subway for the last two days. Both times it wasn't even good. Like, I went the first time, and I was like, no wonder I used to make fun of this place. It kind of sucks. And then I went the, again today, and it was just as bad. I don't know what the hell. I was sitting there like an abused wife who just keeps going back to her husband and thinks it's going to be better, but it really doesn't ever get better. It never gets better. Even the bread that I remember being good from like a decade ago, the, the cheesy whatever-the-fuck Italian that makes it uh, palatable, even that was subpar. The guy today was like, when I asked for it on Monterey Italian, whatever the hell the bread is called, where they try and make it faux fancy, was like, oh, we got six inches of that, but we don't got a whole foot. Uh, do you want me to mix it with something? It's like, no, I don't want to fucking mix my bread. I want a cohesive sandwich like an adult, all right? Anyway, I, that started off a little too, a little too angry. So uh, I should have started off with my advertising, just like I told the advertiser I would. Sorry to my this week's advertiser. That was disingenuous. Um... So I'm only using advertisers on this show that I've used personally and I know are very good, making sure they're worthy of being promoted and that I don't trick any of you guys into using something that I wouldn't use myself. If you know any advertisers that you think I should try out with, I don't know, a funny name or something, uh, then leave it in the comments and let me know what you think. And uh, I also called you sluts at the start of this episode because every time I post about fucking anything anywhere, oh, call us sluts, call us sluts, you guys just have a hard-on for that. Um, I never thought that would catch on when I did it, like, four years ago. Um, anyway, so this week's advertiser, let me get my my paper out. Uh, it's illegalallen.org. Uh, do you find yourself unable to pay market price for labor? Have a leaky faucet or broken vacuum that won't fix itself? How am I supposed to get this stuff fixed in this economy? Well, have I got a hot load of news for you. Now you can use illegalallen.org to find cheap, qualified, semi-legal laborers for a fraction of the price, all from the comfort of your couch. IllegalAllen.org started when Alan Rodriguez needed assistance constructing a fence, yet could only find help from overpriced, underhanded contractors. He realized that millions of Americans must be undergoing this same struggle, and he set out to create a one-stop shop for any and all product or service needs. IllegalAllen.org has become a thundering story of the American dream ever since. Just ask Trisha in San Jose. She broke her elbow while performing a tantric hand job and couldn't afford treatment. Just three hours later, she'd found a former surgeon-turned-landscaper who was willing to perform the entire operation in the bed of his work truck for a fraction of the price. Or ask Clark from Dallas, who simply couldn't afford the new iPhone 6S at market prices. After a mere 40 minutes, Clark had found a group of 7- to 12-year-old Chinese immigrants who were willing to build him one from scratch in the comfort of his own home. Don't believe me? Try for yourself. Until December 1st, log on to IllegalAllen.org and use coupon code We'll Take Your Job to get 15% off your first hire. Um, excellent, excellent product and service. Uh, I use Illegal Allen all the time. Uh, I, j I used them recently to do my laundry, not even because I needed them to take it somewhere, just because I was feeling kind of lazy, like, bleh, like I don't want to deal with it. I'm just going to use Illegal Allen, get, get a couple of fun folks over here to, to chat amongst themselves while I ignore them and pretend that I'm not too lazy to do my laundry. Um, I also, I, those same three uh, nice young ladies, I paid them after Illegal Allen to sit around and lose to me in a couple board games that I needed to practice on. So, you know, I wanted them to kind of try, but not hard enough to beat me just to kind of boost my confidence. So, um, yeah, I'm getting better and better at Scrabble every day, all thanks to them. They don't speak English, which helped me win. But uh, anyway, excellent service. You're missing out if you don't check them out. So, IllegalAllen.org, coupon code will take your job. Um, all right, so that's the only advertiser for this week because I'm a fucking nobody in the podcast world, and I only get one a week. Uh, so, oh, th as as like a real note, um, check out the Patreon link for that is below. Um, it's coming up. 
I think I started the Patreon on October 9th or October 8th, around there. So I'm going to be doing all the month-long stuff like a month from there. So like November 8th, 9th, 10th, whatever the hell it was. That's near around the time I'll be doing that uh, uh, Skype chat with all the people who donate or like 10 a month or 20 a month. I don't know what it is. And then I'll also be doing the, the special episode where I focus a lot on just your questions and answers and that will be uh, released privately to you guys around that same time. I'm just trying to hit it as close to the one-month mark as I can. Anyway, that's really boring. Who cares about that? Um, so, I was looking up news articles because I don't know shit all about the news. Uh, I, I've tried recently in the last month, uh, which is at pretty much as long as I've been doing this. Like, Of course, I would look up articles and whatnot for PKA, but... I would, like, glance at it every so often and kind of remember things, but for the most part, all I was doing was, like, in the two hours up to PKA, like, looking on news sites and uh, really just getting off track and bored because it's just it's just boring. It feels like the same shit every time. There's some kind of uh, disaster somewhere in the world that a lot of people are going to die from. Some kind of disease just showed up. There's a fossil that some Christian in Arkansas thinks is like Jesus's femur. And then, I don't know, a celebrity uh, embarrasses themselves at a restaurant or maybe gets caught masturbating uh, in a hotel lobby when he comes home drunk. So it's, it's all the same and it kind of repeats. Actually, if all news were like the, the former thing, or I guess the latter thing I said, then I would read the news more. That'd be interesting to know, you know. Uh, wow, had no idea that, uh, you know, Hugh Lowry was the kind of guy to beat his meat in a, uh, you know, lounge chair at a Marriott dirty pool, you know, the more you know. Um, it's going to catch lupus doing that, Jesus. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, uh, those, those disasters, I was following the, the Mexican hurricane that was going to, it wasn't a Mexican hurricane, I think it was like named Juanita or something. Maybe I'm just labeling myself as ignorant. It, maybe it wasn't even close to Juanita. seemed like... I know it was going to hit Mexico. Uh, maybe it was like Jenny, and I'm just superimposing Mexico thoughts over the tornado. Not tornado. Hurricane. I'm not a retarded person. Uh, so it was supposed to be the biggest hurricane of all time. I guess it was. It just didn't do anything. And when I saw the little update that was like, number of people killed before it was diverted. Zero. Like, all triumphantly in my brain, I was like, oh, that's, that's good. That's good. I don't want a bunch of people to get swept away in some catastrophic, awful thing. But I, I wanted something to happen, you know? Like, even if nobody died, from, from my own selfishness, and I know this is bad, I wanted to see, like, a bunch of shittle, shittily filmed YouTube videos of, like, that, the water from that hurricane, like, thundering through and like tearing a hole open in a giant bridge or like hitting a big old cathedral and just boom just an explosion of rocks everywhere and debris of debris um or at the very least like a couple of cows sucked up in and like they're like oh my god uh, look at this cow right here that's on a picture on reddit this cow was thrown from 600 miles away and now it just kind of looks like a meaty lump of of gelatinous fluid barely held in by the stretched sinewy flesh of the cow um, I wanted something like that, you know? I didn't want anybody to die, and I didn't even want their homes to be destroyed, but I wanted something to happen, you know? When it gets built up like that, it's just disappointing to not see any giant storm footage or anything like that. Is, am I awful? Is, did anybody else kind of feel like that, or am I the only one? If I am, I'm, I'm a real shit person, but I'm, I'm sure there are other, others of you out there who were thinking, you know, I want something to come of this. I don't want anybody to be hurt, don't want anybody's home to be destroyed, but I want to see some kind of terrific, uh, the day after tomorrow style, cataclysmic stuff going on with this hurricane. Uh, even if it's just like, uh, even. I'm saying this like I'm, I'm giving some leeway, like, you don't have to do much, you, you just do this, you don't have to fucking ruin hundreds of millions of people's lives, it's just, a, it's just what I want to ask, some dude in the Midwest who wasn't threatened at all, uh, which I'll never get threatened by hurricanes living where I live, like, fuck hurricanes, I don't care, you guys on the on the coast, you can be afraid of those, I look outside and see, uh, well, maybe a tornado, actually, those are like mini hurricanes that come around way more often, so, touche, touche, coast, coast folk, um, yeah, I don't know. You guys have to feel like that, too. I can't be the only one who's fucked up in thinking, like, you wanted to see something bad. Everybody wants to see see bad things. 
if we didn't want to see bad shit, we wouldn't go watch those videos on the internet of people like getting their head cut off with a bread knife while somebody yells at them, and then they like put the head in some weird place that's just horrific and and it's gross, and you don't want to watch it, but once you've started it, you're like, well, we may as well see this through, you know. It's like the first time I had to watch The Notebook with a high school girlfriend. It was like, you know, I don't want to be watching this, but if I'm going to be in the room, I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see what Ryan Gosling does and uh, whatever the hell chick, like if she responds, like what's going on. Like, I may as well follow it if I've already begun it, you know. You don't get anywhere by clicking on a beheading video and watching the first three seconds and turning away. You don't get anywhere. You've just wasted a minute of your time. Uh, and I'm not one for wasting time. I think that if you click on that video, you should forge ahead, you know, deal with the consequences later. Fend off those those night terrors <laughs> that you just deal with because you had to watch some stupid video. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been doing real good about not looking at fucked up, like, shit on the internet. I guess my, the, I never really did that as much. It was Kyle who introduced me to a lot of that stuff on, like, I would browse 4chan every once in a while, and I'd see something kind of fucked up on there, but I wasn't going and, like, seeking out really disgusting, gory, awful videos, which Kyle has, like, a weird encyclopedic knowledge of that stuff, and if you bring one up to him, he'll be like, oh, yeah, I saw that. That was filmed in the summer of 07. I believe the culprit was wearing a red shirt. He, he grimaced uh, at, at the sound of the bread knife hitting the the... Uh, spine of his victim, but he forged ahead and went through, you know, four out of five. Uh, yeah, he really knows his shit with that stuff, and I, he might pretend like he doesn't now, but he does. He definitely does. Um, but I I haven't watched any videos like that since we did the Run the Gauntlet thing on the show, and even then, it wasn't nearly as bad as some of the stuff I've seen that's just gross with, like, people pooping on each other or getting shit in their mouths or just, like, weird sexual stuff where it's what you're seeing is upsetting, but it's also upsetting knowing that that dude out there who wants poop in his mouth and, like, wears goggles so he can get more poop in his mouth. Like, that dude, he could be the guy next to you or behind you in line at Dairy Queen, who just hangs out there for like nine hours at a time, just ordering soft serve after soft serve, pouring his savings into it, just because he likes to, the look of it, and it feels more clean than his weird, weird fetish. Uh, th that person can be like right next to you. Think about that when you're at the library. Or, at the library, Jesus Christ, what year is it? Who goes, I haven't been to a library since college, and even then it was only because I had to study. I wasn't like, you know what? There's a big party tonight, but they got a lot of books over in that library, and I'm, I'm due for some learning. Like, no, nobody does that. Uh, you just go on the internet to learn, like uh, someone in this century. Um, the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, people, the weird fetishists and uh, crazy fucks being the ones next to you at stores and shit. Like, do you, do you ever think about that? I think about that all the time. Even when if it's someone who looks totally normal, then I get it in my head, like, that guy looks too normal. Like, that... That guy is with his polo and his perfectly pressed khakis and nice little boating shoes or whatever the hell people wear when they look normal or classy. It's like that guy goes home and like chokes himself to the point of passing out with a belt on a doorknob and is eventually going to be found dead by his girlfriend or parents and it's going to be that he's going to be that guy who embarrasses his siblings for the rest of eternity. Um, I don't know. I think about that all the time. All the time, what people are thinking, like what they do on their own, because you like everybody thinks they do weird stuff on their own, but you're just one person. You're just one cog in the machine. Every other cog in that machine is doing weird stuff in their off hours too. Weird stuff. Nobody's more normal than you. I guarantee it. Unless you're one of those shit guys, then you're you're off the deep end. But with how rare that is, I, get, I there's probably not even like one of those guys listening to this in the entire time it's going to be up on the internet. We could go. I could go back and watch this video in 2030 when it has, I don't know, 30,000 views <laughs> and it'll, it'll still not have had any of the, those 30,000 people into shit stuff. I think it's that rare. Cause I mean the human humans couldn't get by. There'd be too many fucking germs and shit. If it was that, if it was a common thing to be into shit, like either that or we'd have stellar immune systems cause we'd have fought off like every germ known to man. Um, I don't, I'm going off into the weeds here. I had like a list of, of news things I was going to touch on, and I just talked about shit fetishists and wanting people to die in hurricanes for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. So that that's one thing. That, ugh, Jesus Christ. Um, 
Oh, I should have addressed this so much earlier. I was going to have my my buddy, my friend on to do the podcast with me. I tweeted about that or I commented it somewhere uh, saying that my buddy Carter was going to come on and that we were going to do it together. Uh, we had a problem with scheduling and we weren't able to do it this week, unfortunately. I should have said this at the beginning so people weren't like, when the hell is that other dude going to talk? Taylor's being a steamrolling cunt right now. Uh, so yeah, he couldn't make it. He's going to hopefully for next week's episode. Um, it's all about just getting a time where both of us are open. So apologies for that. I would invite Melissa to answer a few questions, but she is asleep on the couch right now, and she could sleep through that Mexican hurricane if it was knocking on our door right now loudly. Uh, it's just ridiculous how easily she can sleep. Like she's, I'm talking full volume, loudly into this mic. Not, I can reach out and. Boop. Just touched her thigh right there. She's still not awake. She won't wake up for this whole goddamn thing. So uh, that's it's a blessing and a curse. Most mostly a blessing because I can watch shit really loud whenever I want. I can play video games with the volume on. I can watch hockey loudly on my laptop. Uh, and she when she's right there and it won't bother her. That'd be way better than dating someone or being around someone who every time you even like f- turned on your earbuds too loud, they kind of groggily turned over and bitched. So, you know, small miracles, little things in life. Um, yeah, so another little news story, trying to forge ahead here. Jesus Christ, it just pissed away so much time. Uh, I saw that Cornell, the university, uh, in the United States, there's some kind of Cornell in the UK as well, I think. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but Cornell sounds like a very English word, you know. Sounds like, ooh, I'm Cornell. I eat t- toast with my tea. Is that what they do, Taylor? Is that is that fancy? Toast and tea? No, what that's uh, crumpets or scones or something. Is that it? Oh, I like a nice scone with my tea before I pray to the queen. Like th- I think that <laughs> that sounds terrible. Um, scones and tea. Oh, Christ! Oh, I forgot my dentist appointment again. Um, yeah, so Cornell kicked out Fox News off their campus after they uh, questioned the liberal bias therein. I assume, uh, from what I read very briefly, and I can't stress the brevity of it, um, is that they were trying to make like a like a, a hit piece, what's it called, a hit piece, a slam piece, where they just kind of like go around, and everyone is guilty of doing this in the media, where they go around and ask qu- like pointed questions in a really direct, fast-paced, loud way where the person can't properly prepare or respond, and so everybody sounds like an idiot. Uh, like what they do with uh, t- Tea Party people, when all those Tea Party people are out in the fields, or when they were, when a couple years ago, and that was big, and the liberal guy, the smarmy douche, will walk up and be like, uh, what do you think about Obama? And then the one in, you know, thousand people they find, or they're like, I don't like him because he's black. They, like, play that 60 times, and the person who actually had a coherent, cogent answer, albeit misinformed, uh, they don't get any spotlight time. So they're making a piece like that. Uh, which, like I've said, MSNBC does it, Fox does it, all the others, e- everywhere does it, because they want to just uh, preach to the already converted, you know, so they can put up their s- douchey little video of like, hey, look at how dumb the other side is, high five, we're right, and then they only convince people who were already convinced, it like, gives everybody a little superiority bump, like, yeah, I'm not on that team, I'm on the smart team, I'm on the winning team. Uh, so, Fox got kicked out for doing that, and that's just kind of shitty, you know? Like, they, they, it would be annoying, yeah. And I know it's a private university, and they don't have to deal with them coming around doing that, but it's still like a like a holier-than-thou move, right? Even if they're going out to people and being like, um, what are we going to do with 100 million immigrants that come over in the next week? And then hold it up in front. Like, even if the person's like, uh, I don't, I don't think uh, there's going to be that many then they still sit on like an idiot because there was no, like, facts or points there. Because there's no winning in an interview like that. Because it's not an interview. It's just you shout a question and talk at them until they kind of blubber something out and sound misinformed. Then you're like, all right, we're done with you. See ya. Going to run over there to where people didn't see us and ask someone else who's unsuspecting a pointed question. Uh, But if you're all about freedom of speech and shit and you're a university of all things, that should be the last institution to say, like, you know what? We don't agree with what you're saying and what you're uh, doing here. You're not hurting anyone. You're just kind of being a, a tiny bit of a disturbance to a few people. Uh, but you're, you can't you can't be here. 
we're not going to deal with your opinions here. We're not going to deal with the way you want to ask people questions here. You're not forcing people to answer, of course, uh, but we just don't want you here. We don't want you here. Different opinion than us. Fuck off. Uh, no, that's shitty. That's real shitty. Imagine the field day that people would have if MSNBC went to, I don't know, some conservative Christian school in the South, and that conservative Christian school was like, MSNBC, get out of here. We don't want you asking your anti jesus -y questions to all of our students. That's ridiculous. It would be a whole thing of, like, afraid of conflict. Uh, Southern Jesus Christ University uh, kicks off news team when they were too aggressive with their Jesus-isn't-real approach. Um, even then, like, they shouldn't be doing that. Like, if you have such a strong leg to stand on, you shouldn't be afraid of a little criticism. And this isn't even as damaging as a little criticism. This is damaging insofar as you're, the network themselves are making themselves look like idiots. The only people that they would convince from that would, are not going to be convinced by that even more so than they wouldn't be convinced by any other argument they would make. Like, they're not gonna... It's only about preaching to the choir. That's all that these little news blips care about. Like, they don't actually do shit. I don't know, I just... It struck me as, like, ironic and weird that a university that prides itself, or should pride itself on... Like, that's what a university is, I think. It's like a place where you can come and uh, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to spout your ideas and have them... Uh, refuted, and then you can learn from that. It's not a place where you go and just study canon. Like, you don't want people going into calculus class being like, this is a bunch of bunk! Nonsense! Witchcraft! You can't know that! Like, th that doesn't help anyone. But if you go to a philosophy class, it would not be helpful if the teacher explained that they were, you know, a Buddhist. And then when you would say, well, how do you reconcile this with that? And they were like, oh, no, no, no. No, you can't say that. You can't say that. That wouldn't help. That wouldn't help at all. I just had like one of those inside my mouth burps and I could taste that subpar, sub sub par sub sandwich that uh, I ate like six hours ago. Fucking disappointing. Ridiculous. And I ate it at such a stupid time. It is a lot of food, I'll give them that. But now I'm, I wasn't hungry enough to eat uh, dinner, so I just skipped dinner and had snacks instead. But I probably even had more calories and stupid fucking uh, pork rinds, which I love pork rinds. Uh, than I would have if I'd just eaten a well-rounded meal. So, there's that. But anyway, back, back to the, the fucking thing I was talking about with the school. It doesn't make sense. Like, do you, am I wrong here? Like, let me know, because maybe I'm overlooking something big, but I don't feel like I am. But I guess you never do when you're talking to yourself alone with someone sleeping three feet next to you uh, as your only source of retort. So, yeah. University should be a place where you can spread ideas and have the the cream rise to the top so to speak we all want that cream we don't want the the weird fluid that's kind of sticky underneath the cream we want the cream i guess that weird fluid is milk isn't it isn't that how milk is made you squeeze the cow's tit into the bucket and then then you like let it sit for a while and all the cream rises and then you scrape the cream off and you uh, put it on your toast lad uh i don't know they don't put cream on toast that's fucking weird uh Anyway, another thing. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, Taylor. <laughs> Who is like, taking this seriously? Like, oh yeah, you made a poignant observation there, Taylor. Wow, I'm, I'm going to take notes. I'm such a fucking idiot. Um, so a, foot, a foosball player, a football player, was fined for wearing purple socks or gloves or something. Uh, no, shoes. It was shoes. Good God. Like, at least take more than... Th this is my note on this. Like, I have little, <laughs> little notes scrawled out for all this stuff. Um, I don't have it written down like, uh, Cornell University does this and that and this. Here are the details. Uh, here, you know, I leave the link open on my computer during the podcast so people can learn more. And I can learn more and uh, properly relay it to them. No, my note for this football thing was football player, purple shoes. Football player, purple shoes. So, uh... <laughs> the football player purple shoes story, which I remember uh, in my head because I read it like 45 minutes ago, is this dude wore purple shoes during the pink month in the NFL. If, you, if you're in the UK and you don't follow American football, so every October they do this weird thing where they make all the players wear like some article of pink. Uh, they do it so they can increase female viewership and make more ad money, but the reason they say they do it is through, so they can raise awareness for breast cancer, which is just nonsense at this point. Like, I, good God, we're aware. We get it. 
Um, so this guy got fined for wearing purple shoes because purple is apparently the color of domestic violence awareness. Which, here's the double-edged sword of this whole colors to promote awareness thing, is if you see the color and you already know what it represents, then you were already aware of it. You're already aware. You see pink, and you know I am, I'm aware of breast cancer. The fact that I could look at that guy and see his purple shoes and think, I guess he just has purple shoes, means that it wouldn't raise awareness unless you were already fucking aware. Unless it says, like, don't hit your spouse on the laces, and they really get some HD zoom on it, nobody's going to fucking know. So you either have to have it plastered on you, or just how about you wear what you fucking want because you're playing a game and it's enough is enough for trying to inject this nonsense of awareness into it. Like, how about instead of this, 1% or whatever of the NFL's profit for the month of October goes directly to research. There's no fucking nonsense with colors or save the tits or, oh, don't watch out for your prostate, you know, Throw a finger up there every so often. Check it out. Uh, nothing like that. Just send it straight to the research and say, hey, you should watch the NFL this month more than ever. Even if you're not a fan, October is the month to try and be a fan because based on the viewership and the ad revenue that we garner, we're sending a full 1% to research. And the NFL is big enough that that could actually make more of a difference because all this awareness shit is just people wanting to feel good about themselves. It's just, it's just a big circle jerk of people like, oh, did you hear about, about breast cancer? Are you, you pretty aware of it? Yeah, I'm pretty aware of it. Did you see this, this, uh, this necklace I'm wearing? It's, it's made of, like, pink rubber that some, you know, Serbian kid made for bottom dollar, not even a dollar. You know, he worked, a Chinese kid worked his fingers to the bone uh, with a big vat full of boiling pink rubber so that he could make these for me in the shape of little tits, uh, you know, consummately made around my neck it's just what the fuck like there's no reason for that shit almost all the money from that goes to the awareness none of it goes to the research and like 600 million people have said this by now but it's just it's getting tired you know every time i see it it's 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 like i ah, it makes me angry and it makes me feel bad to be angry because it, it's like i shouldn't be angry when i see something that's like don't hit your wife or you should be careful of your prostate like that that's a good message but making people aware of it, it just makes you look like a twat, you know? You just look like a big old juicy twat trying to make yourself wet over how conscious you are and how much you care and how if someone doesn't know about it, you can one-up them in conversation and be the holier-than-thou, you know, dick rag who, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going off in the weeds with this, but that pisses me off more than most things. I don't know, know why even it pisses me. Maybe it's just because it's so disingenuous. And you would think that this shit would have been taken care of before now because so many articles have come out where it's like Susan G. Komen sues people for using pink. Susan G. Komen sues people for having a, you know, tagline even vaguely reminiscent of for the cure. Like companies that are actually cared about getting a cure for cancer because uh, I can only assume that when they cure breast cancer it's not like alright, time to move on to next cancer. Like, no, I think that once they cure one cancer, they're going to have a pretty good leap, a good head start on all of it, wouldn't they? I'm no oncologist, but I would I would think that that is how it would work. I don't know. Um, whatever. So that's what I'm thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to read one of the emails that you guys sent me. So this guy is a patron. Patron? A patron. A patroner. Uh, so he got to send in a question or a topic, and if you send a certain amount a month, then I will address it guaranteed on the podcast. So I'm going to read through his, and then I'll move on to a couple of the other Patreon folks, and then on to the YouTube messages, which I'm getting uh, all the, the third-tier questions. Uh, unless you're also a patron there, then I try and put those first. But uh, I'm doing my best to hit everyone. So if you do want your questions addressed uh, and you're just like, you know what, dude? I kind of like your podcast. Uh, half the time it's shit, but you're not too shitty the other half of the time. But I don't want to pay you because at the end of the day, you're just talking and kind of being a dick. Uh, that's totally fine. Just send it to me as a message on YouTube and my channel, and I will do my best to, to grab that. So 
I'm not going to... Oh, wow. Okay, so it says to be anonymous. So a good thing I did not say any details there. So just going to read the body of the email. Uh, am I an asshole? Story time. So last year as a sophomore, I was in gym class. So I guess sophomore in high school because you don't really have gym in college. Uh, we were playing soccer in the gym. I happened to play soccer for the school, so this is my favorite sport that we cover in gym. I never go try hard in gym, but I was playing the sport at a higher level, so gym class was easier to get through and shoot on goal. But anyway, there was a group of freshman girls standing in front of the goal, he puts in bold. Uh, why do they try and force uh, both genders in a sport in gym? It never works. It never works. There's no time where that's been fun for the boys or the girls. Every time I've done it, it's devolved into all of the girls, aside from, like, one or two of, like, the 15, taking it not seriously at all and standing around in an inconvenient place, just like he's describing, and getting in the way. Or they do something where they put all the guys on one team and all the girls on the other team, and then, like, the coach is on the girls' team and helps them win. And that's, like, not it when you're older. Like, if you're in high school and the coach is playing with the girls and it's girls versus guys, they're gonna, the guys are going to win 100% of the time. Um, if I remember this from when I was in, like, I guess first grade. We had this weird gym teacher who would always split the teams into boys versus girls in kickball. And it was like he, he was, like, into the little girls because he was trying to be their hero, and he'd be like, all right, all the boys out there, I'm on the girls' team, woo! And then he would play with the girls, and he would boot that fucking kickball so hard because he was, like, a 29-year-old man, and he would just get home runs every time. Home runs every time. And he wouldn't let... Like, he was the all-time pitcher, but only for them kind of thing. And so he would stand out there on the mound in the gym playing kickball with us, so to speak. And he would pitch that thing so fucking hard. And even if I'm thinking back to it, like, okay, it wasn't that hard. Well, it was pretty fucking hard for a seven-year-old, you know? Like, when you're the coach, or not coach, when you're the gym teacher pitching seven-year-olds, you shouldn't have, like, a decent strikeout percentage. It's kickball. You're meant to be letting the kids have fun. You shouldn't be rifling it in at a bunch of seven-year-olds trying to impress some other seven-year-old girls. Uh, so that's what I was thinking there. Like, he would always make sure the girls won because he would, like, skip their kicking order, too. He'd be like, all right, let me step up in here, too. And it'd be like, God, Mr. Blank, you're such a fucking asshole. Uh, God, whatever happened to that guy? Probably still a dick. Maybe still into seven-year-olds. Who knows? Anyway, I got... Okay, so anyway, there's a group of freshman girls standing in front of the goal complaining about being hit with bad shot that I took. So I said something like, don't stand in front of the goal if you don't want to get hit, retard. It's a fine response. You know, if they complain about getting hit in front of the goal, if anything, you should be happy about being hit in front of the goal because that means that they were they stopped a shot. Like, that's the goal. Um, so don't... Don't stand in front of the goal if you don't want to get hit, retard. And granted, wish I, what I said was kind of dick. Uh, but that was not the end of that. After gym, when I came out of the locker room, there, the girl is there with her group. She's waiting on me. As soon as I walk, it, walk out, she walks up to me and says, Sup, bitch. Sup, bitch! And sucker punches me in the ear out of nowhere. <laughs> right in the ear, just pop and it's ringing. Uh, that's, that's such an awful place to get hit. It's so uncomfortable, and, like, you get that pressure where you, then after you get hit, if it wasn't that hard of a hit and you're not, like, knocked down, you're standing there like like an idiot opening your mouth and moving your jaw back and forth trying to get it to pop back into place. Um, what's up, bitch? And sucker punches me in the ear out of nowhere. I was stunned for a second, but after I gathered myself and said, you shouldn't have done that, and with all my might, I see where this is going, buddy, Jesus, I summoned the open hand slap from hell and whacked her right in the face. See, you didn't mention if it was a backhand or forehand. I guess open hand denotes forehand, so you gave her a big old slap. Did you get it with just the four fingers, or did you get that, like, applause-level sound that where it just hits him right on the cheek with the meaty part of your hand, that satisfying hit? Uh... She was dazed but backed off and said something like, I'm going to get my boyfriend to fucking kill you. But I didn't take the threat seriously. Oh my god, you didn't think she was going to put a hit out on you? Uh, <laughs> well, it turns out this freshman that I hit has a 19-year-old boyfriend and he caught me walking home. And the, the, the long, Oh, wow. And long story short, he fucked my ass up bad. You know what the perfect revenge to this is? 
this freshman is dating a 19-year-old. So it's a 19-year-old and a 15-year-old. Uh, how about you give the old police a ring-a-ling about this, huh? Sounds to me like a little bit of statutory uh, nonsense is going down over there. That's your move right now, sir. Get the authorities involved. And you know what's even more pathetic? If this 19-year-old is still in high school, it's still pathetic, but less so. But if she's one of those freshmen who's dating a dude who graduated high school already and he's still hanging out at the high school with his girlfriend because he doesn't have any friends outside of the high school and still would rather be a big fish in a small pond instead of have to go out in the world and remake something of himself. Uh, what a fucking loser. This guy probably was beating off in anticipation of trying to, you know, fuck you up a little bit because he was like, oh, she's going to think I'm so worthy and hot and I'm old and cool and I'll be able to buy booze in a couple of years and then she'll have to stay with me. Yeah, I'll be able to buy booze as soon as she can drive. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a fucking loser. Not you writing it, this 19-year-old with a 15-year-old girlfriend. That's pathetic. Um, I assume 15 because that's freshman age. But also, I think when you first go into freshman year, you're like 14, aren't you? So this could be really upsetting and disturbing. So if you really want to ruin their life, uh, or his life rather, she'll be fine, then uh, maybe under the guise of being concerned, be like, hey, you know, uh, I, I never realized how much older... He was than her. He could be taking advantage of her, really. It's, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. You know, just plant that seed in someone's head. Maybe a teacher that you know will do something about it. And uh, then just wipe your hands of it and uh, just wait to see him on the evening news. Where the hell was I in this? Sorry I keep getting so off track on your thing. Um, long story short, he fucked my ass up bad. He was yelling at me as he beat my ass. I hit a pregnant woman. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He was yelling at... I accidentally skipped a line there. We need some paragraph breaks. But at that point, I accepted... He was yelling at me as he beat my ass. Turns out the freshman I hit was pregnant at the time. And I had no idea. But at that point, I accepted my ass whooping because I hit a pregnant woman. I felt bad. Dude, you know what? You shouldn't feel that bad. You know what you shouldn't be doing when you're fucking pregnant? Is starting shit. You shouldn't be starting fights. Fuck, they don't even want you to smoke a cigarette when you're pregnant. You shouldn't be starting physical op confrontations with people. My God, you shouldn't feel that bad. You should feel a little bad, but in like a funny kind of way, you know? Like if you accidentally step on a cat's tail. You didn't mean to, but it's funny to see it like freak out for a bit. Uh, yeah, the, you sh the, the hitting a pregnant woman thing, first of all, you didn't, like, gut punch her, like, take this bitch and just uppercut uh, right where the baby's head would be. Uh, yeah, that's, that's nonsense. So you shouldn't feel bad about that, but you should. Now you have a lot of ammunition for going to the authorities because she's going to have to say, well, she doesn't have to say who got her pregnant, but if that dude is as dumb as I think he is, he's going to take credit for it, and then that's a little bit of statutory, a uh, little bit of statutory rape. Hmm? A little bit of statutory rape? Hmm? Is that what it is? Uh, well, I walked away with a fucked up knee and a broken rib and a black eye. Good God, dude. Yeah, you did get fucked up. Well, I guess that's what happens when someone who's in the middle of puberty fights someone who finished puberty a year ago. Uh, what an asshole. What a complete asshole. Fighting a... I assume you're 15 or... Or, your sophomore, so probably 16. Uh, yeah, th those are... It's not like... That's not like me fighting someone three years older than me, you know? It's not like by the time I'm 27 or 28, I'm going to be way bigger than I am now, unless I get to be a fat fuck or something. Uh, but I'm not going to get way taller or something unless I get really lucky. But that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, those three years are integral for fighting strength, and you got hosed. That guy is a dick. Uh, so far, you're not an asshole. There was a mistake, and you defended yourself, and it looks like this 19-year-old's the asshole. Um, I ended up not playing soccer that year. I was meant to be on varsity as a rotation player, but I sat on the bench through the whole year because of my knee injury. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. That blows. This is awful. Today, I'm still not 100% from my knee injury, and I can never play soccer the same again. I went from an above-average player to a slow-average player, so I don't know. I guess I'm not really asking if I'm an asshole, but I'm asking if I deserve the beating. I think in some ways it has made me a better person. Well, you know, it... It may have, but honestly, I don't. I probably don't think it did. I probably thought you think. I I think you probably already were a good person, and you're really bummed out about the fact that you can't be as good at you were as as you were at soccer, and so you're thinking this made you better. I I bet you were already a good person, guy. You know, I'm glad you're handling it well. That's good, and you don't seem super resentful or anything like that. So, yeah, it, it man, 
man, this is this is a tragic story, man. That sucks. I was a cocky cunt my freshman and sophomore year in high school. A lot of people are, man. I thought I was hot shit, and me acting kind of douchey, uh, like calling someone a retard, was not super out of the ordinary. But now I'm quiet, humble, and cautious about how others feel. But in every physical aspect, I'm in worse shape. I will never be the same soccer player again. I will always be slower, and since I missed a year of play, I'm also behind in technical ability as well. So this is all just karma evening things out, or did I... So was this all just karma evening things out, or did I get the short end of the stick here? I'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah, dude, you got the short end of the stick hard. Uh, you got punched in the ear. Sucker punch. I don't care if it was a chick. I don't care if that chick was pregnant. You couldn't tell she was pregnant. She wasn't walking around third trimester holding her belly like, Oh, Jesus, the floor's getting wet under me. I don't know if my 19-year-old boyfriend walked by or if shit's about to get real. Uh, she, was, she wasn't clearly pregnant, but she still started something. You're not mature enough to have a child if you're going around starting shit when you're pregnant over something as petty as someone calling you names. You know? That's, that's ridiculous. You, you, are, you got the short end of the stick. You got shafted. You got shafted in the ass, this whole scenario. You should not feel bad at all. You defended yourself, and that was it. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that, dude. Man, fucking blows. Uh, well, shit, I, I talked about that one for a while. That was a long one, but it was also interesting to me. That that was a lot more intense than I thought. Broken ribs. Um, from one of the Patreons, got, Hey, Taylor, nice podcast. Could you talk about the war on science, especially in the U.S.? Here is some basic backstory from Nat Geo. Don't be afraid to skim the article. It's really long. Um, story was posted on March of this year. How the fuck do I open this whole thing? How the hell do I open this? It's saying that your con your fucking comment is... Oh, God, I'm an idiot. It's, it was... Okay, so don't think I'm a total tard. Uh, don't want to don't say retard. Don't want a 19-year-old to come out of nowhere and beat my ass. Um said see more at the bottom like for comments where you read part of it and it says see more but it's in very light font and my eyes aren't great um da, da, da. thought it was relevant due to how the climate change denier bought a magazine promoting scientific research um so science especially in the u.s science denialism i know what you're talking about and i have probably a lot of experience with this compared to a lot of people not like politics wise but i went to a school that was religious and that religious school i can still remember sitting in my 10th grade biology class and the lesson was literally like like i didn't really give a shit enough about biology to be sitting there like hey evolution is real i just kind of was like whatever this will make the test easier when in doubt just put because god had a bigger plan like what are they gonna fucking i figured that out pretty early in that school is that they're not gonna call you out for using God as an answer, because then I can just be like, well, I just, you know, I, I put my faith first, and that's what my faith is, is that God took care of it. Uh, not all things are for us to understand, as you know, as it says in the holy book. Uh, so I just took advantage of that all the time. Just didn't know something on a science chest. Fucking God did it, you know, straight away. Jesus, you know, dipped his balls in the ocean and gave him tides. Uh, just easy, easy stuff. Don't know why I was needlessly lewd right there, whatever. Um, so, I've seen that science denial stuff firsthand, and it's, it's weird. It's weird. We watched, uh, <laughs> an abortion video. It was a video about abortion, as mo as you would assume an abortion video to be. Uh, I was a sophomore in high school, so I guess I was like 16 years old, and we were talking about, uh, abortion and how it was just awful, and the teacher was saying, you know, it was a sin, and that was a living person, and they deserved a uh, right to life, and that you were a murderer if you did it, and it was super extreme, and that God would be so disappointed in you, he would, like, get you up to heaven and be like, oh my God, can't believe you did that. Well, to hell with you, and then kick you off into the, into the fiery lake. But I remember the video showed us, like, a whole room, and it was, like, even at then, and this was all, this was, like, nine years ago, even then, I could tell, like, the grainy quality and, like, the shitty pseudoscientists being interviewed were kind of nonsense, but I didn't really care because uh, I just noticed a film was on, which meant I got to kind of tune out. And it was just pictures and videos of jars full of these little homunculi-looking baby creatures, which, you know, I don't doubt that they were real fetuses, I guess, that they were keeping there for studying purposes or something. I, I don't know. But th that's reasonable enough like i'm sure they want to study or do something with them afterward not just throw them directly into the you know recycle bin uh to sort between you know paper glass plastic and fetus uh but 
it was weird because there were like 50 of them and I did have a difficulty believing like, all right, so this guy who works in this big fetus factory just walks in every morning to a scene that looks like it's out of Saw where it's like that little puppet thing hit a key in the you know stomach of one of these little gremlin looking fucks and you had to search through all the jars in three minutes or uh, your rib cage explodes outward. It just didn't make sense. It was too unrealistic. Um, yeah, but it did fuck a lot of people up at my school. You know, a lot of the the girls who did get pregnant pretty much always had the kid, which I guess isn't fair to say because if they didn't get uh, pregnant, or if they did get pregnant and they got rid of it right away, then you wouldn't even be able to tell that they got pregnant. But of all the ones who ever got visibly pregnant, every one of them went through to term and had a kid. So, and they couldn't even come to school during that time, you know? I don't think. Maybe I just made that up. I think I just made that up. Uh, so... A lot of anti-science there. Global warming, they didn't touch too much on because Jesus doesn't really have a stance on that. But they were, they said some shit. I remember, what was it? What was it that that, that guy said? I'm not going to say his name. My teacher. Uh, oh, God gave us, <laughs> God gave us the planet. And if, and we can use all the resources here as if they're ours. And if it's God's plan that we run out, then that's the way it is. But if he wants us to have resources, we will always have them, no matter what science says. And it's like, if all of our answers to this shit are going to be like, because God says so, why even have a science class? Like, you've already got your mind made up on all of this. It's like going to a literature class and the teacher being like, all right, we're going to have a book report on our favorite books. And then someone comes in and is like, my favorite book is Harry Potter. And she's like, oh, that's interesting. It's incorrect. That's incorrect. It's actually The Great Gatsby. The next person comes up. My favorite book's Lord of the Rings. Oh, very interesting choice. Very interesting choice, Mr. Smith. It's actually The Great Gatsby, though. You fail as well. Like, the, what's the point? What's the point of even having school if someone's so set in their ways that they're not going to concede anything or at least, you know, have the, the decency to discuss it with you, you know? That's just shitty. But the anti-science thing... I think it's way more overblown than it actually is. Like, aside from a few... Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not, you know? And my only experience with it is in school. And politicians, I guess, some, like, Republicans are against... Like, some of them are... Pretty much all of them are against abortion. And it's, I think it's split pretty evenly between those who uh, believe in global warming and those who don't. And I'm pretty sure at this point, more accept it then don't uh, they just take the stance of like yeah it's global warming but it's natural we're not doing anything you know if it'd be the same situation if we never existed you know can't disprove that you know we can't disprove that just like you can't disprove god or that that little homunky like gremlin in the jar is a person like uh yeah that's a shitty arguing tactic is the whole you can't disprove it that bothers me because of like it's you know, disprove, I don't know, I'm not going to go into that, you know, briar thicket right now, because I could just go on for hours and hours, um, yeah, so the anti-science thing, I, I think I might, if it takes my fancy as a topic, I might go through this and, uh, that article, and come back to this next week, so I can get a better feel on what you're talking about, but I just thought I'd bring up that story of the, the whole anti-science nonsense I had to deal with in high school, I had to learn pretty much everything about evolution when I was in high school on my own like and it wasn't until that class was like halfway over that I was finally like you know what I may as well like figure out what's really going on here instead of just accepting these weird made in 1987 with a weird guy with a mustache and thick rimmed glasses telling you like well you your grandparents aren't a monkey are you a monkey and everybody's like all the kids are like no was your grandpa a monkey no and then they show like a picture of like have you ever seen one of these and it's like a half bear half snake and it's like no because evolution's a fake it's a falsehood you're being swindled by the liberals children like i don't know why he sounds so scary but uh that's what it felt like but yeah i had to do all my own research on evolution to see what it was because i wasn't getting jack shit for information uh at that time um Alright, so, oh, I wanted to, this one's from last week, but I just wanted to touch it. So you should make a subreddit for the podcast so people can ask questions or post would-you-rathers. Uh, there already is a subreddit for it. Just go to, uh, it'll, it'll be in the link of this video, actually. Yeah, head over there and check it out if you want. Um, 
I'm a mod on it, which I've never been a mod of it, and so far I haven't done anything with it, and I don't plan on doing anything with it. So uh, I'll be over there every so often, but um, I don't even know what, what modding means. Like, can I... I don't know, whatever. Uh, from DBG Murdoch. Hey, Taylor. Love your videos, and also you on PKA. This kind of pertains to the topic you were discussing last week. I am a college freshman this year. During high school, I had a fair amount of friends, but in college, I really want to be a social butterfly. I want to, I want to college experience parties and shit like that. Uh, also, a girlfriend would be pretty nice, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Good move, good move. Um, I write for you. My question for you is how do I become that social butterfly? I recently put in an application in for my question for you is how do I become a social I think you just repeated yourself on twice. Uh, I recently put an application in for if you fraternities and recently got a call back from two of them. Uh, do you think this will help me achieve my social goals? Yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I obviously don't know the school the, the school that you're applying to, but you absolutely want to go to a fraternity. Get in a frat, make some friends there, it'll open up a lot of doors. Um, if you go to a school that has a big Greek life, it'll mean that you're going to meet a lot more chicks, you're going to have a lot more fun, absolutely do that. As far as your question of how do I become a social butterfly, um, just think in your head, like, if this social, like, in high school, if you fuck up a social encounter, it goes around real, real, real quick. In college, it's not going to be like that. If you talk to some chick in class, and she's really not into you, and you make a boob of yourself... Just sit somewhere else in the lecture hall next time. It's not a big deal. And you're probably not going to see her much outside that class. So so whatever. What the fuck ever, man. Maybe for an hour every other day it's uncomfortable for a tiny bit until you both forget about it and you're not thinking about it and who cares. Like just – you can just let things roll off your back a little easier because it doesn't have this – you know, it doesn't c catastrophize – in your head as much like you're not constantly thinking like oh my god i'm gonna say this and this to her and then and then she's gonna tell all her friends and then then they're gonna come up with rumors like like i i pee the bed and and i poop my pants in class and blah, 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 and i wear pampers and i don't know why that was all bathroom and shitting and soiling yourself related but whatever um yeah just just go for it and do the frat thing you'll thank me later um i can't tell you how to be a social butterfly it comes different to other people to everyone you know, the best way to do it is to just make people laugh. If that's not your cup of tea, best thing could be uh, just knowing when... See, I, I can't even give good advice because I only know my way of doing it. Like, I can't give advice uh, to people who are trying to achieve something that I did in a different way, you know? Um, it'd be, like, I couldn't give someone advice on how to start a successful podcast about, you know, uh, scientific discoveries or historical uh, artifacts. Uh, to be frank, I couldn't even give someone advice about how to start a fucking podcast on entertainment or comedy, because I haven't done that yet. That's the bitter truth. Um, yeah, so it, it all depends on, on your go-to, what your personality is, and you know how you can best put your skills to work. But all you can do now is join those fraternities. Pick the one. Uh, they'll, they'll have rush parties for both. And so go to a couple of the rush parties for both of them and see which one has more chicks and which one seems crazier. And a couple, even more important than that, is which one has, you know, at least a core of guys that could be in your rush party, uh, in your rush class, rather, not your rush party, uh, that you get along with. And you'll be really happy you did. All right, let's see. Here. Jesus Christ, this is long. Make sure at the bottom that doesn't say like some of you, like if you guys want to be kept anonymous in these, put in the very beginning like anonymous because otherwise I might accidentally read your name or something and then by the end it'll say like BTW I don't want to be named and it's like well fuck. All right, from Mark, am I the asshole? So you guys really like doing these. I do too. It, it, I like judging people and being completely distant from the situation. So I always have plausible deniability if it turns out I'm totally wrong. Um, all right, so me, 17-year-old male, was skipping last period in high school, so I got home a little early. I came to find my sister's drug dealer, 18-year-old female, 7.5 out of 10, very specific, t sticking her arm through my broken garage window, trying to unlock the door. I wasn't sure what was going on, so I decided to hide behind my broken-down truck at the end of the driveway, peeking out periodically to see what's going on. Uh, after about 10 minutes, she got the door open. So, wait. I, I was... At first, I was picturing this like you waited. F I, I I skimmed through this so so briefly, 
like only through the first uh, paragraph or so before the show just to make sure it was something that I thought I would get into. And then I saved like the last two thirds so I could answer it sincerely. And I did not realize that you sat there for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, dude? Are you sure it was 10 minutes? Cause that's a long fucking time to sit in the a dr- in your own driveway and watch someone try to break in. Like, wouldn't you get antsy, like, knowing that one of these minutes she's going to get that fucking garage window broken or open and something's going to go wrong? Like, that that doesn't make sense. So I'm, I'm already a little little sketchy. Um, t- t- after about 10 minutes, she got the door open. She's not too bright, hence the coke and thievery. She walks through my garage and into my house. I wait a minute or two and quietly open the door behind her. So once she went in, you still waited a minute or two? That would have been my, like, Chris Hansen walk in and bust a moment. Except that wouldn't be my bust a moment, because the second I saw someone trying to fuck with my house when I turned the corner, I wouldn't pull some, you know, spy kids shit where I hid, hid behind a car and waited for them to, like, make a move. I would walk up and be like, what the hell are you doing? Sorry, my third itching. need a drink. Ah, lukewarm ice mountain water. So, wait a minute or two and quietly open the door behind her. I can hear some fumbling from the game room where I had just put up a brand new $800 TV when all of a sudden I hear a large bang. Oh, Jesus, that's not good, man. Quickly followed by a shattering sound. I immediately sprinted up the stairs to see this girl staring at the shattered television in awe of what she'd done, and I scream at the top of my lungs, What the fuck are you doing? Her eyes dart up to me in shock. That she had just been caught starting to that she had just been caught starting to mutter. I was just I was I was uh you were trying to steal my TV you fucking cunt is what he says. Sorry I'm about to have a coughing fit. <coughs> okay. Hope I'm not getting ill. I was just I was you were trying to steal my TV you fucking cunt. No I promise I was just trying to. No you stupid. Fu- I like how you have dialogue here like you wrote a book. Uh, at this point, dude, at this point, we're like halfway through it. She's at fault because she's a breaking and entering bitch. But you also shouldn't have let her get this far, man. Like, you were asking for this a bit. Like, y- you were asking for it a bit. You let someone break into your house without any precautions, knowing that there was like almost a grand worth of brand fucking new electronics, and you let a, co- a known cokehead make their way in. Not good. Not good. Not Not looking good for you right now. Uh, no, you stupid fucker, I watched you break in the garage window. I'm, I'm sorry. She stares down at the floor. A moment of silence occurs for about two seconds. I casually start to check her out with my teenage mind at work. Uh, she looks up and sees me staring at her chest and her eyes brighten. Uh, she's used this little ticket of escape before. Without thinking for more than a second, she seductively whispers, I'll let you touch them if you don't tell. I quickly stare back up at her eyes with the, to meet a reassuring nod. I respond, that TV just cost me $800 and an hour of mounting, you stupid, th- that stupid fucking bracket. I'm not about to just throw that away for a titty grab from some slut. Uh, she hates being called a slut. Yeah, most women do. Uh, she used to be a cam girl of some sort. She, her smile quickly dissipates and she wistfully says, why are you being such an asshole? As if, she, I didn't, as if she didn't just smash my savings from working 80 plus hours a week as a shitty cashier at minimum wage into pieces all over the floor. Isn't that crazy? That just, that female, you know, suddenly you're on the back, he tries to put you on the back foot. Tries to put you on the back foot when you are the one who just caught her breaking into your home. Breaking your shit. Nonsense. Nonsense. Can't fall for that. And you clearly didn't because this is like the most ridiculous one-sided thing ever. Clearly she's in the wrong. Uh, As far as what she did, she is in the wrong. No doubt about that so far. You are in the wrong for not responding appropriately. So you do bear a percentage of the responsibility here. Um, I take out my phone and start to call the police. She stares at my fingers as they press each button. Nine... One. I like the dramatic button pressing. Like, everybody doesn't know the buttons you were pressing. Like, I just, I started to dial 1-800-CALL-THE-POLICE. Um, 1-800-PIG-GET-HERE. Uh, she runs over to me, grabs the phone out of my hand, and presses the lock button. I look up at her questionably, and she persuades, I'll make it worth your while. Oh, maybe you mistyped, but it says, I'll make it worth your wild. Mmm. Ooh-hoo-hoo. As she takes off her shirt, exposing a hot, fuchsia-colored bra, 
Uh, we then begin what every virgin 17-year-old mind has been looking forward to since the fifth grade, and then the thought hits me, I don't have a protection. She fumbles around her purse and takes out a condom. I pinch the packaging to make sure the air bubble is still there. Smart. Thanks, health class. And so begins the day of my dream, losing my V-card. All right. So this is making more sense now that you you gave her this much leeway. Like, in, because you're a virgin and you were looking for... Nothing wrong with that. Like, that's everyone was a virgin at some point, but you were looking forward to, like, the possibility of it. I bet, you know, if you look into your heart of hearts, sir, I bet that you... You probably watched her break into the fucking house knowing that something like this could happen. You know she was just enough of a coked-up slut that if you caught her in the act doing something where you had a little bit of leverage, you could fuck her. And so that's that's what I'm thinking. I think that that whole, you know, because what, what other incentive is there for you to sit around for ten minutes being like, I wonder what she's going to do when she breaks in. Probably be real respectful of my property. Like, no. Fuck no, she's not. She's going to wreck shit and sell it for coke. But you knew that. And you knew you could get away with a little of the old in and out if you just bided your time. So, this is this is getting a little more nefarious now, man. Like, the more that I'm putting the pieces together, it seems like you strategically let this girl into your house so she could do something wrong so then you would have leverage and be able to fuck her. Because you knew that her being a coke slut, that she would offer it immediately because that's probably her, her ace in the hole. Her hole is her ace. Um... And so begins the day of my dreams, losing my V-card. After finishing on her face as I demanded, Jesus! Just 0 to 60 in your sex life, huh? Just <laughs> virginity gone? Oh, you know, on your face. Ah, I've seen porn. <laughs> Asked if I could borrow her car, to which she reluctantly said yes. Yeah, yeah, she just is getting realized that she got kind of fucking bamboozled into getting fucked and facialized in your house after trying to <laughs> steal your TV. <laughs> Definitely reluctantly. Uh, loaded up the TV and returned it to Walmart, claiming that it was broken during transport and was missing the bracket. They gave me a new TV, and now I have an extra mounting bracket sitting in my garage. I got the new TV put back up and had it working before my parents and my sister got home. The perfect crime. All I had to do was yell at some manager at Walmart for 15 minutes, and everything was back to normal. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ, dude. I was... This has just gotten progressively worse and worse. This says at the end, so Reddit, am I an asshole for blackmailing my sister's drug dealer into sex? So this may, this could just be someone who fucking pasted this in. I have no idea. I don't really care because it was entertaining and I liked that one. And I, it doesn't change my response one bit. But yeah, that's that's really fucking douchey. Like, cause you definitely, definitely knew, you knew that there was shit that by letting her in, you were guaranteed getting laid because you'd have leverage. And that's the creepy part of it. And it wouldn't be as creepy if it was like a real porn scenario of you walk home and the door's already busted in and you're like, oh my god, what's going on? You walk in, you know, heart a flutter, anxious about what could be around the next corner, and then you see this sexy little babe sitting there with your broken TV looking coyly at you, and then you go over and you uh, engage in your first act of sex. And even then, the reason if the only reason she's doing it is because she wants to get out of going to jail... That's pretty weird, and I, that would put a damper on it for me, at least. Who knows? Uh, it's your first time, so I'm sure anything was just hunky-dory. Um, yeah, and then the whole yelling at the Walmart manager. I don't like that. Those people in customer service don't need to deal with your lying shit. Uh, although I do understand why you did it. If I were in a similar situation, I would do my best to do that, too. Uh, especially if it, the choice was that or send someone to prison. Because uh, I wouldn't pay for my shit if I went to prison unless you had some kind of home insurance. Yeah, I just I wonder what that car ride was like. It's like you just finish on her face, which is really demeaning. On top of all of that, um, <laughs> and I'm uh, just picturing you guys getting in the car after that. We're like, I need to use your car, and she's just sitting there, kind of shuddering because she needs her coke, and because she's just <laughs> realizes all the nonsense that you've put her through, and that she's put herself through by doing this thievery. Um, yeah, that, hopefully that was a close Best Buy or Walmart or whatever, because that would be really fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> God, yeah, you're an asshole. You are an asshole. Bonafide, uh, do not cross go, do not collect $200, fucking asshole. 
you did a number of things there that we both know were asshole assholeish. Um, do you ever think about your old friends from school? What they say watching your podcast? I know a number of my friends who watch my my stupid YouTube shit, and uh, usually they'll be like, "Hey, I saw your podcast," and I'll be like, "Oh, neat." We still hanging out tonight? And they'll be like, "Yeah, it wasn't that bad." But uh, no, they don't. They, most of them think it's kind of cool. Obviously, one of my friends wants to come on as a guest because he. He and I have good banter, and we think it would be funny. Like I said, we our we are scheduling got fucked up, so that's why there was a bit of a snafu there. But, uh, yeah. Um, from Harley. Hey, I was, I was thinking about this, and I haven't decided which I would prefer. Would you rather have read every book and manuscript ever written or have visited every web page ever made? Oh, definitely books, dude. Definitely books. There aren't books... With every page full of just weird, disturbing, upsetting, nightmare-inducing content. If you've seen every web page on the internet, you're not going to be able to sleep at night. There's going to be some shit in your head that you just can't flush out. Worst thing about a book is like, what, I have to read a few pages of Fifty Shades of Grey? Well, I guess the whole book, but whatever. Like, it, it, so what? I can block that out. I can just read numbly as I'm just kind of speed reading, not paying attention. You can't watch someone, uh, you know... Uh, do something unspeakable to a decapitated dog head and then just not think about that later. Like, your life is ruined if you see every web page online. All right. Um, Dan Smith. Hey, Taylor. What are your favorite podcasts to listen to? Um, my favorite podcasts are Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast, um, Biggest Problem in the Universe, it's Maddox's podcast, PKA, because I'm on it, and I'm, I'm obviously a fan of that. Uh, Kevin Smith's Smodcast is pretty funny. And what the fuck else? What other podcasts do I listen to? Those would be my top ones. You know, the the biggest two being, I obviously not putting PKA in there, because that's really douchey to put your own thing in there. And truly terrible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the ones I listen to the most, Bill Burr and Biggest Problem in the Universe. Um... From AJ, hey Marka, longtime fan of yours through Nazi Zombies and PKA, although I am thoroughly enjoying your new Truly Terrible podcast. Well, thank you. As you stated, you, you are going to, through a board game phase. I would like to recommend Last Night on Earth. It is a zombie board game where you can construct your board and humans have different objectives, so there is an element of replayability. It will last 45 minutes to an hour. That's a good length of time for a game. Uh, is it, it is a high-quality board game with fi figures for each of the characters and zombies. Anyways, keep up the amazing work. Glad you're posting on your channel again. Uh, I'll check that out. Uh, the biggest thing that holds me back when people mention board games is they're like, oh, there's this awesome board game. Uh, it's called uh, Civilization X Reborn Unlimited, and it takes 30 hours per turn, and, you know, just a, a quick season-long game from January to March, and you're good to go. You know, time for the next game. I, I hate long-term games, which is why I don't like Civ, or I don't think I would like Civ. I don't want to spend 10 hours playing a game. Sounds really fucking bad. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, someone did donate to me through Patreon, and they fooled me. They fucking fooled me. He was like, your claim that you won't answer stupid, dirty questions about poop and butt stuff, but patron questions are guaranteed to be answered. Is that a loophole? If so, how many fingers would you take in the butt for a million dollars? Slut. Winky face. Uh, that is, in fact, uh, a poop hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a real loophole. So I did promise I'd answer any questions as long as you're a, a patron for the month and it... You, you don't just, like, pledge it and then ask a shit question and then just unpledge it, because that's kind of mean. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I have to answer that. Um, I don't even think there is an answer for this at all. Like, it, the answer has to be zero. Zero, and you don't take the million. Because no one would want to hang out with you, knowing that that was... Well, they would want to hang out with you, but the people that would want to hang out with you would not be the people you wanted around you. And the people that you cared enough about that wanted to hang out with you before you got your million would have a, they'd have no respect for you and they'd have like a weird kind of view of you in their eyes, you know? Like the cuz if it were, oh, I got a million dollars and I just so happen to like some fingers in my butt, they'd be like, "Okay, you know, whatever, to each their own." But because it's contingent on the fingers in the butt. Is it a wait, who's whose fingers? 
that's integral. Because you could fake being into something like that and just be like, yeah, that's me, take it or leave it. Because then it's not dirty. Then it's just, oh, they did something they liked and they got money for it. That's that's great, you know? It's just like having a really good job. So depends on whose fingers. That's, that's the correct answer. And if it's just a uh, dealer's choice and they get to pick the fingers, no every time. Because they're going to pick some guy with like elephantitis thumbs and shit and it's not going to work out. So, yeah, you found a little poop hole, you fucking slut. All right. So uh, let me see if I got one more here I'd like to do before I, I sign out. Um, da, da, da. I'll get you next week because that's too long. Um, hey, great to have you back. NHL award predictions like the Calder, Art Ross, Selk. Um, I don't have any award predictions yet. I honestly don't follow the award shit very much. Um, as far as how the NHL season is going so far, I'm really pleased with the Blues. You know, I expected them to do really well because they always do really well in the regular season, or they have for the past number of years, and then they just get their shit packed in when they get to the first round of the playoffs, and they never make it, and it's really disappointing every year to watch that. Um, I was really ha- <clears throat> I was really happy for the first part of the season when Chicago was sucking a little bit, but now they're they're doing really well, so good for them, I guess. Uh, the whole Central Division is just fucking ridiculous. Having St. Louis, I mean, Nashville, Dallas, St. Louis, Chicago, and Winnipeg are all solid teams right now. And then meanwhile, the Pacific Division is horrendous. I think, who's in first over there? San Jose? And if they were in the Central Division, they would like not even be in our top four. They'd be tied for last, or like two, a few points ahead of last. I don't know. It's just, it's just, no, they'd be more than a few points ahead of last. They'd be a few points behind fourth, I think. But Blues are doing great. Tarasenko's killing it. I just finished watching the the Blues, the St. Louis Anaheim game, right before I started this, and that was a great game. Really physical. I was getting really angry at the TV when I saw that Tarasenko might have been hurt, and so I was pissed about that. But then we lucked out with uh, uh, Perry. I always want to say Periaco, but it's Pareko. Uh, that guy is a bomb of a slap shot. He's only 22 years old, and he's going to be excellent. But uh, yeah, I have high hopes for the Blues this year. I think we're going to do well. Uh, favorite team in the East right now. I'm really liking the Washington Capitals because I like Ovechkin and I also like Oshie because he played for the Blues. And then, uh, other than that, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to the season though. But anyway, I know most of you aren't aren't hockey fans, so I'll shut the fuck up. And uh, all right, so that is it for this week. If you guys have any suggestions or anything, feel free to leave a comment. And please do not forget to check out the Patreon because it helps me out a lot and helps me to. God, should have just ended it there instead of dragging on for another fucking eight seconds for no reason, sounding like an unprofessional twat. Anyway, that's it. Love you.